If you use Microsoft Teams, you might not know when to use chats or channels. Today, we're gonna to try to help explain what those are so you can make the decision. Today, I'm going to be doing a little bit of an update on an early video we did on the difference between chats and channels. Microsoft has released a number of new features to both of these uh, tools. And we really wanted to kind of update this with some new information that we didn't have before. Again, if you have used Teams for any length of time, you probably have used direct message chat and you may have used Teams channel messages. They seem like they may work very similar, but there's some fundamental differences that are important for you to understand so you can select the right one to use for the type of communication you're making. Let's start with an overview of chats and channels within Microsoft Teams. Chats within Microsoft Teams are really intended for individual communication from myself to one or more other people that involve either messages from me to these other people or maybe files, um, documents, uh, or other content that I might be sharing or communicating with these other individuals. So if you were to think about that in a diagram, you have these pods, which are each individual user and their data. So files may be stored in OneDrive, forms maybe in Microsoft Forms, my chat messages, which are in Exchange, and I'm using Teams to communicate that and message that to other people and share that with other people. So that is really how, if you think we're thinking about it from a diagram perspective, that's how it would look, is these individual pods of data that I'm sharing with other people. In contrast, while a channel is also a way to communicate, with other people, it really is much different in the way you should think about it than a direct message. You could think of maybe a, like a direct message in the same way you would think about a group text um, and a channel more like when you're sending an email to a shared mailbox, right? You're communicating with maybe a wider audience, an audience that is unknown to you, right? Even though I write this message out to maybe a particular person, it could be seen by lots of people because this channel as its own entity isn't something that I'm in direct control of. It's a part of a bigger thing called a team and that team has its own life outside of whatever I might do with that message. If you were to look at a similar diagram for a channel, it would look a little bit like this. You would have all of the data, instead of being stored for each user in the context of each user, it's stored in the context of the team, and all the users are given access to either create or view content within the team and within the channel. This is a really fundamental difference between chats and channel, and it helps to explain some of the differences in functionality and how you, why you might choose to use chat or a channel for your communication. For a chat, you can actually set a topic that your chat message is about. So if I create a brand new chat message, or let's say I have an existing chat message, this one's between myself, Ashley, and Mike, I can have, click on this little name this group chat, and when I do that, I can name it um, meeting update and save this update. Now, what's interesting is what if I wanna have two chats with Ashley and with Mike that have a different name because I want a different topic? The way you would go about that is actually go up here to create a new chat message, include Ashley and Mike, and then if I select, so if I don't do anything, you'll notice that it brought up the chat that we already had, but I don't want that chat because this is a new topic for my discussion. So I click this drop down, and now I can actually name this something different. So now I can name this um, uh, project, uh, info, right? And so if I start this, I now have two separate chats with the same individuals, but they have different topics. So that's how it works within uh, a chat. Now let's talk about a team. So if I open this team, each team has multiple channels. So if I go to the human resource team, you can see that I've got a general channel, a COVID channel, a drug test channel. I could create additional channels that on a different topic if I would want, but pretty much every channel that you create, the name of that channel helps to identify and explain what the topic of that uh, discussion should be. In addition, when I create a new one, so I'm gonna go add channel, you have an opportunity to provide a description and that description can also help further explain 
what that channel's topic is and the, the, the things that should be discussed and shared there. So really when it comes to channels, you're not really able to create a new channel without a topic, right? Within, when you create a brand new team, you get one channel called general. Beyond that, you have to give it a name and give it a context that is the, way, the, the topic for that discussion or that channel. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is files and attachments. This is a chat that I have and I already posted a, a message with an attachment. And when, if I wanted to know where this is actually stored and how it's secured, I would need to go into my OneDrive and that OneDrive has a folder called Microsoft Teams chat files. Within there is this file, hello world, which is the same as the attachment that I have in the, in the, in the message. And if I wanted to know about how that's secured, it's actually only given permission to the people within this chat. So there is a direct permission given for Ashley and Mike for the hello world file within my OneDrive. If I wanted to have a, so let's say I have a long chat and I have lots of different files, that's what the files tab is for. The files tab allows you to see all of the things that have been shared within that group chat which gives you the impression that they're all stored together. But in reality, if, if I shared, like the one that I shared is in my OneDrive, if Ashley shared a file, that would be in her OneDrive with special permissions for me and Mike to see that file. If I then add a new person to our chat, chat they only will receive access to any new files. Any old files, I would have to manually go find and give them access to for them to be able to see those files as well. Related to channels, channels, you can also post messages that have attachments. So again, I posted my hello world file, but in this case, that's gonna be stored within the SharePoint site and the document library associated to this particular team and channel. So if I wanted to see that, again, I can go to the files tab, but in this case, I'm gonna be seeing basically a folder structure that's related to that channel and if I went to click open in SharePoint, you can actually see the document library that's behind the scenes storing these files. Now the permissions on these files are governed by the access that's given to the team. So when I go give someone a new, as a new member of a team, that user automatically gets access to all of the files related to that team, including the ones in this channel. Now let's talk about how to organize some discussions on a particular topic or subtopic. So if I'm in a, in a channel, this is something that's been around for a very long time and it's actually the default functionality of a channel. So I always am really working in a threaded conversation. So this message that I sent a little earlier with hello world, if I want, I can click this reply button and that reply button is going to give me the ability to directly provide a message back and further articulate a, a discussion that we're having about this file, right? just updated with the latest data, right? Um, and then others, again, can reply back to me and it's a threaded discussion. It's a truly a threaded discussion. And if I wanted to create a new conversation, again, I would click this new conversation and it's gonna create a new thread that we can have further discussion about. This is very different than what is now available in chat. So recently, Microsoft added the ability to reply to uh, a message but it's not quite the same. So if I go and I click the ellipsis, ellipsis on a message and click reply, instead of replying to that message at that point in time and creating a, a direct conversation, it's more like it's creating a quote. So it's more quoting that previous message and allowing me to create an additional message related to that. So cool screenshot and when I send it the message is going to both include the previous message so the quote and my additional information now let's talk about notifications notifications have a default setting that all notifications within teams start out with and after that they can be customized within a chat notifications are defaulted so that anytime you receive a chat message, you're going to be notified. This is very different than a channel message. A channel message is only gonna notify you if someone directly tags you 
or the channel. So unless they say they want to talk to you about this thing, you're not going to get a notification about that message. You are expected to look through your channels and see things that are highlighted. That highlight will be your signature that there's a message and you go investigate. If you're looking to customize your notifications, Teams have, has a lot of options. We went into that in a little bit more detail as part of one of our office hours. And we have a video that we'll put in a card up here. Now I want to talk a little bit about some features that are unique to chat messages or to channels. In the case of chat messages, you may have experienced a scenario where I'm having multiple conversations with different people and, I, and it may be difficult to switch between them. So I might have to click on the one and then find where I'm at to, to message them or switch back to the other one to message again. Uh, it would be a lot easier if you had separate windows that were maybe next to each other to be able to continue that chat at the same time. That's possible with chat messages. So within the chat message, there's a button that allows you to pop out a chat message into its own window. And you can have four or five, six windows next to each other where you're chatting with people at the same time. That same functionality is not available for channel messages. Channel messages can only be seen in the context of the larger Teams application. The rest of the features I'm going to talk about are really unique to channel messages. In a channel message, you can actually change the way that you manage and organize a channel. So I can actually go into a channel itself and change the settings on the channel to say, stop people from being able to post messages. So let's say I have a scenario where I want to have an announcements channel where maybe the owners of the channel can post messages, but no one else can post messages to that channel. I can configure that channel that way, and I still am able to communicate with all, all of these, this group of people, but they can't uh, you know, create additional messages or noise within that channel, and we can focus on just the announcements that the owners of the team want to produce. Next up is the ability to email a channel. This is really useful for a scenario where you want, you maybe have a previous shared mailbox that people were receiving messages through, and you still want people to be able to email information, but you actually want to talk about it, capture that information in a channel. So to do this, you can actually create a virtual email box for a channel, and then anytime someone emails that, that mailbox, it'll immediately create a new message in the channel that everyone can see. The last thing I want to talk about is analytics. Within a channel, there is now a tab that you can go analyze what's been going on with that channel. So you can see how many people have posted in the channel, how many people have replied to the channel, what reactions, a lot of cool information about what's been going on with that channel. This might be a really good way to look at weeding out some of your channels. So let's say you have a large team that has maybe 10, 15 channels, but a few of them are just never really used. Maybe you think about either getting rid of them changing something about them, maybe uh, promoting them in a different way if you really want to use them. Um, but it really gives you a way to look at what's been going on within that channel. In addition to organizing a channel, you also have the ability to make some settings specific to any given channel message. The benefit of doing this would be, let's say I don't want to have an entire announcements channel, but I really would like to be able to make announcements that are big and bold, or maybe don't allow people to respond to the, to the announcement itself. So they have the ability to create their own conversation, but I don't want them to be able to have a conversation about this announcement. To do that, you can go into the channel message, and if you click on the format button, you'll see a couple options on the upper part of this. The first one is a new conversation versus announcement. And if you choose announcement, you're gonna get a big, bold headline. You're gonna get a subheading. It's really focused on giving a message that's really prominent to this channel. In addition, you can choose how you want people to reply. So by default, everyone can reply. You can also say only myself and moderators can reply. Finally, you can also post these messages to multiple channels. So if I choose this option, so let's say I am an owner of five teams that are all on a project and I wanna make an announcement to all of those teams. I can choose this option and then select channels, and I can actually choose multiple channels either within the same team or across teams to post the same announcement across all of my teams that I care about. Hopefully you found this helpful and gave you a little insight into some of the new features 
within chats and channels. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us in the discussion below, or we have office hours once a month. You can check out the details also in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.